Welcome to December 2021. With many people kicking off solo careers and various 2D projects welcoming new groups into their ranks, it may have happened that you missed some of these in this jam-packed year. As such, it's time to talk a bit about the biggest things that happened in the Seiyu industry, namely the big and unexpected solo debuts and the new 2D groups and Seiyu units that joined in and are already impressing everyone. Let's kick off this episode of Seiyu Lounge. Welcome to Seiyu Lounge, I am your host Vanessa and today's topic is the big solo artist and 2D group debuts of 2021. In this episode, you and I will look back into 2021 and go over in a bit more detail about the big solo artist debuts, whether those were successful or not, as well as new groups joining some of the highest profile 2D music projects. I will not talk about new groups from new projects, as everything in there is, as you can expect, new. For that, I welcome you to check episode 71, as I'll be talking about those in a bit more detail. Now, without further ado, let's talk a bit about this year's solo debuts. 2021 wasn't as prolific in solo debuts as I'd expected after the disruptive 2020, but I've got to admit that most, if not all, came as a surprise for me. I don't know about you, but every year I point out to you that I'd love to see kicking off solo careers. Earlier this year, I bet on solo debuts by Shun Horie, Shoya Chiba, Yuya Hirose, and perhaps with luck, Yoshiki Nakajima. My bets all went down the drain, as this year's solo debuts were completely unexpected. Yes, 2021 was completely atypical when it came to the Seiyu that announced the start of their solo careers. The biggest solo debut of the year was undoubtedly Takuya Gucci. When you think about him, you'll remember he's a variety show personality, hosts multiple radio shows, has his own clothing brand, designs jewelry, is a part-time games YouTuber with Natsuki Hanae, and does plenty of anime work, not to mention is a frequent feature in 2D music projects. All this alone would make you say he doesn't have time in the middle of all that to make a solo debut. Yet, Eguchi found that time. I find that impressive. Seriously, with all that he does, joining the music industry would have been the last of his worries. The member of the popular CU unit Trignal decided to venture solo in 2021, kicking off his solo activities under Kiramune. He released the mini-album Eguism and absolutely caught me off guard with the sound that he chose for that release. Pop rock was a big part of the body of sound in the mini-album, with plenty of electrifying songs to choose from, as well as a couple of bubbly, upbeat tunes made to put a smile on the faces of his fans. He did play safe when it came to the singing in this album. He is well known for being a chameleon in whichever 2D music project he is casting, but in this album you barely listen to him exploring his range or insane versatility. And you will notice, as I talk about all the other big solo debuts of the year, that that is a constant. All Seiyuu artists, especially in their debut or sophomore CDs, tend to play extremely safe to attract more people and find a music genre, approach or singing style that suits them best. That's natural, however, for a singer like Takuya Gucci, incredibly reliable, with a solid vocal baritone range that can go as high as a tenor or as low as a bass, and loads of experience under his belt, I was expecting something a bit flashier or more confident than what was in that mini-album. However, as far as solo debuts went, Takuya Gucci's was the best solo debut of the year completely unexpected and with a mini-album Eguism that is near flawless. Daiki Yamashita 
Another big solo debut of the year is Daiki Yamashita. A couple of years ago I was hoping he'd join the music industry and have a shot at showcasing his insane technique and skills as a singer with professional classical training. It seems that with each year that passed that Yamashita's focus wasn't going to pass through music. However, after many years waiting, Yamashita announced his solo debut with a sketch music label best known for housing rock bands. In a way, this solo debut was surprising and, in the other, it sounded like a natural progression, something expected of him, however, we were all waiting to know when it would happen. For those that may not know, like I said a couple of seconds ago, Yamashita is a classically trained singer. Becoming a voice actor was just a result of his curiosity while he was attending Music Academy of Music in Japan. He would eventually major in music, but it seems like if voice acting hadn't sparked an interest in him, by now he would either be a singing teacher or even an opera singer. So it's no surprise that whichever music project he joins, you'll be in for a treat because he's a terrific singer, insanely consistent with a good technique and skill set, versatile within his natural tenor range, but with a good chunk of baritone available to him as well. He's been dazzling everyone as part of the lyrical pop group Growth in the Skipro franchise since 2015. He's a big reason why Knights in the Ensemble Stars franchise sound that well as a group. He absolutely dominates Lolo D's performances. No matter how tricky a song is, you know that Yamashita will pull it off with a ridiculous ease. He's that good of a singer. His solo debut was with the mini-album Hear Me and fans were pretty impressed with what they heard. At the time I recorded this episode, I still haven't reviewed the mini-album, but you can expect my impressions on this mini-album at the Hand That Feeds HQ's website before the end of the year. Daiki Yamashita's solo debut may have not gotten the fanfare that Takuyaguchi's got, but is for sure one of the most exciting seiyuu joining the music industry in recent years. Now let's change the topic slightly. This year I talked extensively about what makes seiyuu wanting to rush solo debuts. This is becoming a worrying trend in the seiyuu industry in which seiyuu with very few roles in anime and barely any popularity suddenly kick off solo careers most of the times under big music labels. This is genuinely puzzling for me. And there were two solo debuts in 2021 that were extremely rushed. Jin Ogasawara and Takuma Nagatsuka. And before you start thinking that I am criticizing the CU themselves, please have into attention that what I am putting on the spotlight are the risks that this CU may incur in because they rushed a solo debut that could, for example, have come naturally, result of good exposure in anime and 2D music projects. Jin Ogasawara I've mentioned a couple of times that I absolutely love how much Jin Ogasawara has been growing as a singer, especially his work with Gyroaxia in the Argonavis from Bang Dream franchise. He's grown a lot as a singer, now having more control and a bigger emotional range in his performances. You can tell that he's honing his skills, making sure he's the most effective without straining his voice but also that he can consistently deliver performances that will surprise fans of Gyroaxia. Well, as much as I love his singing voice and his energy and charisma singing for Gyroaxia, or even for the WAVE franchise, I believe his solo debut was incredibly rushed. It is known that Seiyu now, more than ever, are trying to branch out to the music industry in hopes of having another steady revenue stream. Most of the CU making solo debuts are either incredibly popular or have long careers behind them. At the time Ogasawara made his solo debut, it didn't fit any of the two descriptions. And this worries me. If really popular CU with long careers as voice actors and vast experience in 2D music projects most of the times fail to experience success, the risk of failure is even higher 
for say you that aren't popular and don't have a long career to showcase. So when I analyze some of the solo debuts in 2020 and this year, I can't help but worry that Seiyu, with good singing skills, however lacking popularity or substantial work in the Seiyu industry, or even both, will have their solo careers crashing and burning soon after their debut. Many are the examples of rushed solo debuts that failed. Takashi Kondo, Genki Okawa, Yutu Suzuki, just to name a few. And many are the popular seiyu whose solo careers failed or are failing to attract attention. Kensho Ono, even Yuki Ono. Not to mention many are the seiyu with a lot of popularity from 2D music projects that couldn't manage to have that popularity translating to their solo careers. Shotaro Morikubu, Tasuku Hatanaka, Takuya Sato and more. That's why Jin Ogasawara not waiting a bit longer to make a solo debut sounded rushed. Some of you may say that this was the right time. But honestly, from a career longevity standpoint, you would want him to make a solo debut a bit later on in his career. He's still incredibly young and has much to prove both as a voice actor and singer. Well, Ogasawara made his solo debut with only one thing in 2021. Digital single that brought to the spotlight Naughty's pop punk with a bit of electro rock in the mix. It was a single with a twinge of nostalgia and, in equal measures, a youthful vibe. His second digital single, Guns and Loudness, was slightly different, embracing a fast-paced aggressive rock sound, and despite not improving upon his debut digital single, it showed a different side to Ogasawara, the solo artist. In December 2021, he releases his first mini-album, Turbo. I am curious to check it as well as know how it is received by his fans. Jin Ogasawara does have the talent and shows that there's much more left to untap, however, a rushed solo debut under an indie music label and only one relatively big 2D music project bringing a bit of attention to his solo career may not be enough to lead to a successful solo endeavor for him. Of course, I want to be wrong in this assessment, so I'll rephrase it and say that I do hope he can, as an indie solo artist, rise and have a lot of success. Takuma Nagatsuka Takuma Nagatsuka goes in the same line, although he does have a bit more work in 2D music projects, albeit most of those are not popular, and anime. When Nippon Columbia announced the solo debut was incoming, Many were the CU fans that hoped big names like Shun Horie, Shoya Chiba, or even the rising star Yukihiro Nozuyama would actually be the ones getting that solo spotlight. But as the clues were unveiled one by one, it was clearer and clearer that the excitement among those that posted those predictions in the first cryptic post absolutely died down. When the name Takuma Nagatsuka was unveiled as that seiyu making the solo debut, the international side of the seiyu fanbase didn't show much excitement. Many claimed they didn't even know who he was, to my surprise, and there was that sense of not being interested at all in what Nagatsuka had to offer. I don't know about you, but I actually enjoy his performances with M4. I know some of you will be asking yourselves who are M4, and well, that's a normal reaction because Marine Entertainment barely promotes them. And of course, if you've been around 2D music projects since around 2017, you'll know about how popular is the side M franchise in which Takuma Nagatsuka is part of High Joker. So for me at least, Takuma Nagatsuka isn't an unknown seiyu. Just a seiyu that is not popular and is not part of many 2D music projects with big exposure. His solo debut announcement was really strange to experience, especially from the side of someone that breaks the news to international fans on a website all about Seiyuu music. Usually, when you break news of solo artist debuts, fans get excited. This time around, there was silence. And on whichever news website focused on Seiyuu that you choose to read that news from, there was mostly indifference. His solo debut came out of nowhere, and I believe part of the indifference from the public comes from that fact. 
At the time I recorded this episode, he is not considered a popular seiyuu, known among some fans, yes, but not popular. And he hasn't had many opportunities to showcase his voice acting skills to warrant people getting excited over his solo debut. And somehow he attracted the attention of the big time music label Nippon Columbia. This is something that no matter how much I try to understand, I can't. Big music labels don't bet on seiyuu that are barely known or that have yet to prove something. That has always been like that and it makes sense. The investment that the music label is making on that seiyuu solo career has to bear fruit, otherwise it was a waste of time and money for them. I'd love to know your thoughts about Nagatsuka's solo debut, so don't hesitate to leave those in the comments on YouTube. As far as his music goes, Takuma Nagatsuka is all about dance pop. For those that love the music genre, it will sure be a treat to check out. Nagatsuka focused a lot on covering songs on his artist YouTube channel to showcase his singing skills and release the full dance video version of his debut single, Dance With Me. He lacks a bit of consistency as a singer, something especially noticeable when he tries to belt, but other than that he's got a passion for music and singing and a lot of potential to untap. Only time will tell if his solo career will actually be successful or not, but as far as first impressions by fans in Japan go, selling under 1,800 copies of his solo mini-album is a lukewarm debut. You and I go from solo debuts to Seiyuu Unit and to the music group debuts. 2021 was a quiet year for Seiyuu Unit debuts. That is a trend that has been fading away in recent years, however, the Seiyuu Unit debut we got in 2021 was one that made a lot of longtime fans pretty excited about. I'm talking about Trado. Takayuki Kondo and Daisuke Ono, formerly known as members of EDM Pop Seiyuu Unit DAT, reunited after disbanding in 2020. However, as you can expect, the duo couldn't continue with the name DAT upon changing music labels. They signed to Pony Canyon and Marine Entertainment is the one that owns the name DAT. The change of name also marked a change of sound for the duo. Their debut mini-album, Tread, was all about K-pop-inspired pop music. Intense, fast-paced, trendy, made to attract new generations of fans as well as cater ever so slightly to international fans. That mini-album was followed by the single Strangers that continued to capitalize on that sound, but also bringing back some of the elements that were part of their sound as DAT. The duo was well received, despite the relatively lukewarm sales numbers, and sparked a wave of nostalgia to everyone that followed DAT until their disbandment, only to have the awesome surprise that was them making a comeback with a brand new image and sound. Buraika. As far as new groups in 2D music projects go, Buraika is one of the biggest debuts of the year. Braika is a rap duo consisting of Kensho Ono and Junichi Swabe, and you can find this duo in the Paradox Live franchise. Their debut arrived in Paradox Live's album, Live, and it easily turned into its highlight. Braika is not on your face being aggressive just for the sake of it. Their sound and words showcase their intensity, with a unique laid-back flair while still making sure you know where you stand. That untouchable aura is really something. Their debut song Buraika is back has little nods to the 90s and early noughties with that grit and gangster vibe being well present throughout. This was a massive addition to Paradox Live. Usually 2D music projects add new groups into the mix when projects are getting stale or on the opposite end, just because the project is getting popular and they've figured a new group will bring in more sales. And usually those new groups don't add anything new to the project. Well, Buraikan does bring a lot to the project with a unique sound, completely refreshing vibe, 
even outside of the Paradox Live franchise, not to mention with an unexpected duo that works incredibly well. I'm really impressed with the quick impact Braikan had within the Paradox Live franchise. After a long stage battle series, they arrived just at the right time, giving a breath of fresh air to it. The Hundred Anthem franchise is big on its exciting and intense EDM sound for all groups. However, to spice things up a little bit, the project added two new groups sharing the same cast between them. Alba and Chura Jodo arrived to shake things up with their unique brands of EDM and with a powerful lineup that includes Yuki Sakakihara, Wataru Urata and Kentaro Kumagai. The lineup brings two skilled tenors and one baritone to the stage, leading to unique performances with a delicate and melodic twist. Fans of the franchise have been all over both groups with the release of their singles Go Up and Scream. Hound Roar The Dig Rock franchise surprised everyone this year with the announcement of a new band joining Ruby Leopard and Impish Crow. Hound Roar is a rock band fronted by Hibiki, voiced by Toshiki Toyonaga, with guitarist Shoma, voiced by Hyohei Kimura, bassist Toya, voiced by Hikaru Midorikawa, keyboardist Shion, voiced by Yuichiro Umehara, and drummer Sogo, voiced by Takashi Kondo. Hound Roar's acid jazz rock sound arrived at such a great time, with the band's first song, Roar, easily showcasing just how unique this band is. Their sound embraces rock, soul and funk. Bass lines are massive and Toshiki Toyonaga's vocals are the perfect addition to them. The following songs, Syndrome and Reincarnation, arrived in quick succession during the summer, with their funk sound being the perfect complement to the season in question. I believe that now, with Ruby Leopard, Impish Crow and Hound Roar, that the Dig Rock franchise is fully optimized and complete. Hound Roar was the missing piece balancing this project. Class First Class First is a new unit in the Idol Master Side M franchise. This was an unexpected addition, however, one that the fans easily welcomed after checking their debut digital single, We're the One. The group dons an electro-pop sound that will easily stand out as trendy and features the vocals of Takeo Otsuka, Yuri Ise and Masaya Miyazaki. This mix of new and up-and-coming talents is showing a lot of promise with their first proper CD, the Idol Master Saidem Growing Signal 2, Class First, being highly anticipated by fans of the franchise. Golden Record Lastly, we have a group that wasn't as well received as all others in this section. Earlier in 2021, Reject announced that the new group would be joining Marginal No. 4, Lagrange Point and Unicorn Jr. in the Pythagoras production franchise. Fan reactions were pretty negative upon that announcement, with many fans thinking that what the franchise needs right now is new music or for each group to refresh their sound not for a new group to join the declining Pythagoras production franchise. Well, as someone following the franchise since before Unicorn Jr. were announced, I believe people were overreacting. Yes, the project needs a breath of fresh air, and yes, I believe that should pass through choosing a new composer to work with each group, instead of having Mikoto composing music for all groups ending up repeating a lot of things in the almost decade he's been working on this project. But the new group may also be a way to attract new fans into the project, although unlikely, but I can understand Reject's thinking in this case. Still, how many fans of 2D music projects want to follow a project that has over 8 years of music, a game and an anime series when it's way easier to follow a new project that doesn't have much content to catch up on? You know what I mean? So yeah, I also understand your indignation if you're one of the various people that believes this franchise didn't need a new group. Well, the thing is, Reject is all about making weird decisions, so... Golden Record was announced as the new group joining what is one of the longest-running 2D music projects. 
The group has a lineup comprised of rising stars in the CU industry, signaling that Reject is not kidding about the quality of this group. Golden Record features Gakto Kajiwara as their center, Yuya Hirose as their leader, and Shugo Yano. They are a dance, vocal, and rap group, with their debut single, Love Holic, highlighting their skills and technique in what is the most complete group to actually join the Pythagoras production franchise. Love them or hate them, Golden Record is a pretty exciting group. And yes, the Pythagoras production franchise still needs a good refreshing of its composers and producers team to give a breath of fresh air to all units. And these, my friends, were the big solo artist, Seiyu Unit and 2D Music Group debuts of the year. <music> 2021 was a quieter and incredibly unpredictable year for solo artist debuts, but you can't deny that there was a lot of quality in there. Same thing for 2D music projects and their new groups. Aside from a couple of new groups that didn't add much to the projects they joined, the wide majority of 2D music groups actually arrived as a breath of fresh air, gave a well-needed energy boost to projects that had been running long CD series or tried to rejuvenate projects that have been losing popularity in recent years. Regardless of the reason, there were 2D music groups for all tastes joining 2D music projects. There were solo debuts that, in a couple of years, we'll still be talking about because of their quality. And while I'll still be impressed by how clever Takayuki Kondo and Daisuke Ono were by leaving Marine Entertainment and a couple of months later reuniting under a different name and gave a new breath to their partnership as the dynamic duo they are. Now tell me, what was the solo debut that impressed you the most this year? And did any of the new group debuts spark an interest in you? Let me know in the comments on YouTube, and remember, Leave your comments as complex or as simple as they may be, and you can be featured on upcoming episodes of Seiyu Lounge. If you enjoyed this episode and don't want to miss the hand that feeds HQ's weekly mail Seiyu and music-related content, hit the subscribe button. I'll return next week with another episode of Seiyu Lounge. Thank you for listening and see you guys around.